What is happening, Vinyl Community? Dylan Hayes coming at you again on the Hayes Vinyl Review Channel or HVR. I'm gonna start plugging that into each episode. Just welcome to HVR, you're back at HVR. Um, I haven't posted a video in weeks. Um, I think it's at the point now where it's length of time where I can just say months. It's been a good bit. Um, I've been a little bit busy, but I'm still wanting to jump back into this thing and try, try as best as I can to upload a video each week just to kind of keep showcasing my collection, delve into the Elvis stuff so you can keep seeing that, um, and uh, just kind of keep rolling and see who I can connect with out there. So this week we are going to be looking at one of uh, another newer release in the Elvis catalog uh, within the past 10 years or so. Um, this is another compilation album. Um, it's probably one of the more popular releases over the past several years that they, the uh, estate has put out, um, or RCA has put out. I'm sure a lot of you have this album, either the CD box set or the vinyl set or both. Um, there's kind of three different variations of that. I have one of those here um, that I'd like to show. I was looking for different videos online for a good review of this release. Um, and I've seen some, um, but I kind of wanted to show on just another side of it, just in case anybody is looking to purchase this, then you can. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'll go ahead and show you what we got here. <clears throat> And excuse me, I'm going to try and get this to where the light doesn't create a ring over the album cover here. So let's check it out. Elvis at Stacks. This is a 2013 release. Um, this is the Newberry, um, Newberry comic release up here. So it's half gold, half black. Um, it's a super cool pressing, you guys. Um, I recommend picking this up. I got this copy off of Amazon, um, and they are a numbered release, and I believe that Amazon still has copies left on there. I'll try and put a link in the description um, of the site so you can go there and just purchase it um, if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, but in 2013, this was the 40th anniversary of these recordings um, from 1973 at Stack Studios. Um, Elvis went in to do... Um, I guess it would be his second to last uh, studio recordings other than Graceland. I'm not counting Graceland in that. I'm talking about um, going to a professional recording studio to record. Um, the last one would have been for the Today Sessions. Um, so this was split over, um, I believe, late July of 1973 and then mid-December of 1973 as well. Um, a lot of great cuts off of this album. I actually think that the, these recordings and then the Today recordings are probably some of the best of the 70s. Um, and this is leaning towards the last uh, three to four years of Elvis's life. So I wanted to show this to you guys just to see what it looks like. Um, here is the back with the different song listings here. So just reading off of some, and you're gonna recognize a lot of these um, as more mainstream uh, um, Elvis popular songs. Some of them are not though. Some of them, it wasn't until really this release that I was kind of exposed to a lot of these songs back in 2013 and actually fell in love with them. Um, so we've got Promised Land, the Chuck Berry uh, re uh, recording. We've got uh, I've Got a Thing About You Baby. If You Talk In Your Sleep, which I actually really like that song. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't really like that song, kind of the funky jazzy blues number. Um, but I, I really do. I especially like the way he did it in Las Vegas in 74 also. Um, we've got Raised on Rock. And you guys might um, kill me for this one, but I don't really like Raised on Rock a whole lot. I think it's actually kind of corny and cheesy and is kind of the opposite of rock. But that's just my opinion. Um, I, st I can appreciate the song, but it's still it's not one of my favorite recordings. Help Me, which is a beautiful song. And then we go into a lot of the alternate takes. So the the first side of side, um, or the first record, so side one is the master takes of those five songs I listed there. The rest are going to be alternate takes of the rest of the song. So just to kind of give you some other ones, like I Got a Feeling in My Body, take four. For Old Time's Sake, take four. Talk About the Good Times, take three. Good Time Charlie's Got the Blues, take eight, which I wish they would have included the master take on here for that one. But take eight is beautiful. It's fantastic. Um, so jumping to the mixing, what does it sound like? This sounds pretty fantastic. The mixing that they did for this um, is really, really, really well done. Listening to it from the CD set, 
Um, I would say it's comparable. What I've noticed with a lot of vinyl, newer vinyl releases is the gain or the volume on these releases isn't necessarily as loud as what the CD releases are. Um, so that's a little frustrating, but it's still a great listen if you're just you know chilling at home, get the get the turntable out, and you want to you want to listen. Um, recommend that. So, um, sorry, just kind of adjusting here. Um, so yeah. As far as overall sound, I think it sounds great. I think the new mixes sound fantastic for these songs, especially compared to the, the album releases. Um, the bass is more present. One particular thing that I've noticed with the song, um, I've got a feeling in my body. I don't know if RCA tweaked this in the late 90s with a lot of those releases and the early 2000 releases. If you notice with some of those, like the, take the, the Promised Land album, when it, like if you get the 1974 pressing of it and listen to it. Um, fantastic the mixes sound great I've got a feeling on my body if you listen at the very beginning um, and then as it kind of carries out before the the chorus each time or during the verses um, you'll hear you know I'm sure if I say this and I'm gonna sound ridiculous but the part where the guitar is kind of got the funky you know da -da 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 -da. right after that you're gonna hear the drums kind of follow up with an echo like da -da -da -da. A lot of the late 90s releases um, and also early 2000s cut out that drum part and I don't know why because once you hear it, it adds so much more um, fullness in the sound and gives it even more of a funk. Um, makes you really want to move to it. So with the newer mixes uh, from 2013, that was present on here so you don't have to worry about that. And just, just a little tidbit, go back and check that out um, with the different releases and tell me what you think. Um, so if we're gonna talk about how these songs stack up to the albums, um, my number one complaint with Elvis's catalog in this, in the, especially in the 70s, is that a lot of the songs I don't think were um, presented in the best way with the albums that they were. They could have been shuffled a little bit better to kind of flow uh, through each album instead of just you know cutting one through five or one through ten on this one, then ten on the next one. Um, I think it could have been done a little bit better. Maybe even make it just all kind of like this presentation, make it an event. If they would have done a I don't know a double double LP, a a four LP box set back then, and I understand they want to make money and they want to you know present things as best as they can to live up to the RCA contracts of I think what was it one album a year um, so cut several and then delay it to the next year I get that but as far as Elvis's image goes and as far as the artistry goes I think they could have done that and been a little bit better my own critique though I'd love to know your your uh, comments in the comments section down below um, just kind of give me your input on that what do you think um, so yeah this is the Elvis at Stacks release I'm gonna show you now the vinyl just so you can get a good look at that to be able to decide for yourself if you want to buy it. Oh, before that though, this, like I said, this is a numbered release of uh, one out of 1,000. The number that I have, I was actually surprised since ordering from Amazon, it was pretty low. I have, I don't know if you can see it up here, I've got number 128. So that I was actually really surprised. I was actually kind of happy about that, kind of a lower number. Um, but here we go, just to give you a look, this is side one of the first disc with the master. Kind of get it in the light there so you can see that. So it's pretty cool, the half black, half gold. It's funny whenever you do have it on the turntable, um, how it looks, but I really, really like it, guys. Um, it is not um, 180 gram vinyl, so it's not as heavy. I think it's standard, so. Uh, that is kind of a downside to it, but overall it is a good presentation. As we all know, the sleeves on the inside are generic. I wish they had some pictures or something to go along with this awesome release, but they didn't. Um, but that's this this week's um, episode. So uh, comment below, what do you think? What do you like about this release? Tell me what you think about the vinyl pressing. Tell me about your own collection. I wanna hear about that. Um, I wanna reach as many people as possible, and I'd love to hear um, your different comments from where you're at, what you like, what your interests are, what your favorite Elvis songs are, favorite albums. Maybe I have them. Maybe I can do a video the next time. Let me know what you want to see. Um, I want to give a shout out to Rossi1973. Um, he gave me a great comment in my last video. I watch his videos all the time. Check out his channel. He uploads a lot of great audience footage of 8mm footage of Elvis in the 70s. He does a fantastic job and he's a very, very nice guy. So check out his channel. But yeah, again, 
Thanks for joining me this week, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for tuning to HVR.